everybody, it's the War Hipster here, coming at you with another Contrast Plus painting tutorial for the Seraphon. Yes, we're back with more dinosaurs, and today we are painting the brand new Croxigor. <laughs> here they are. Absolutely fantastic, wonderful new miniature kit. Sent to me early by Games Workshop to build up and paint for all of you. That is exactly what are we going to do today. I'm very, very excited. I know a lot of you are very, very excited. And we're just going to jump in and we're going to start doing it. He's been primed in Wraithbone. And the colour we're going to be using first is Skeleton Horde. Now we're going to be painting this over the top of the kind of soft areas on the underneath. And, well, we're just going to get started doing that. Now we're going to basically start right in here under his armpit. And we're going to start applying this like this over the top. Now you want to bring it round on the back to around about there, like that. And I wanna get this all over the inside of the tummy. Like this, and we're gonna bring it all the way around onto this side. I've actually got a little bit too heavy there, so I'm just going to move that paint around. So it's not too brown in that corner. There we go. Like this. What we're also going to do is going to do this bit just under here. And do the underside of his neck. You want to make sure you bring it right around like that. And we want to make sure that we get this skeleton horde over the soft underside of the tail as well. like that. Now what we're also going to do is we're going to take a small amount of this and we're just going to bring this down the inside leg like that up to the knee. We're going to wash the brush and around that knee we're just going to lift off some of that excess Like that, so it becomes more of a kind of staining of the inside leg. So you see it's a little bit brighter, a little bit weaker. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. Like that. I'm going to wash the brush. And then once again, just get in there and wipe most of it off. Like that. And then lastly, on the kind of inside of the arm, we're also going to do this. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the skeleton horde all over. There, like that around a little bit, bring it up onto the arm, onto the elbow, shoulder, <laughs> heads, knees and toes. I'm going to wash the brush. And then, as we've done so far, I'm going to wipe most of it off. Just like that. I'm going to wash the brush and just take a little bit more of it off. There we go like that. So it's quite a subtle staining going on on those arms. Let's 
So with that skeleton hoard all applied, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Coelia green shade and we're going to apply this over the entirety of the miniature. So what we're going to do is start down here at the feet and we're going to apply this over the top. Just like this. Now, when I say over the entirety of the miniature, of course, don't mean the weapon. And if at all possible, try and avoid the inside of his mouth, for example, as well as any of the other kind of little trinkets and things. We don't want those to be Corellia green shade. However, for the rest of him, for all of his skin, and scales and all of that. We do want to apply this over the top of, including the area that we've just done with Skeleton Horde. As you can see, I've got all of those scales done. But what we're going to do now is move on to that inner thigh. And as you can see, you start to get that really kind of pleasing, slightly green tinted skin that they have. What we're going to do is going to start applying this over the top like this. And then when it comes to areas such as the chest, we're just going to go in there with our clean brush. I'm going to mop it up. Like that sort of thing. So with that Corellia green shade all applied, what we're now going to do is we're going to take a roughly one-to-one -one mix of contrast medium and Croxagor scales. And we're going to be doing quite a bit of blending here. So what we're going to do is we're going to start here on this leg uh, and we're going to start applying this all over the top. Now it is very dually. And, you know, we want these to be quite cold lizards, but don't worry, we are going to be darkening it down even further. But what we're going to do here is we want to mostly apply this over top of large scales. And then whenever it starts to kind of blend into musculature, we kind of want to blend it out into the areas that we've already done, or rather the colours that we've already done, being Corellia Green Shade and that shaded Skeleton Horde. So for example, on this leg here, as we've just done, I'm going to wash the brush now, and just on the inside of the leg, just under there, we're just going to lift off by feathering away with our clean dry brush. Then on the feet we're going to do pretty much the same thing. I mean, what we're going to do is we're going to apply this all over the feet. 
like this. Bring it all the way around. Like that. And then I'm going to wash the brush. And then I'm going to take most of it off. Just like that. Similarly, on the kind of flanks here, we've got some large scales. We're going to apply this like so. We're going to wash the brush. We're going to take most of it off and move it around like that over the flank, wash the brush, just make sure we get most of that off so we get a nice transition into what will now be fully covered over large scales. Coming down the back and the tail. So I'm just going to bring this across so that we don't get any strange, peculiar drawing lines on these bits. And again, I'm just going to bring it all the way down the tail. So, gonna make sure that we get this on both sides. And if you do spill over onto the underside, you can see I've got a little nick there. You can just wash the brush and pick it up. I'm just gonna do the same thing on this side as well. Again, just trying to avoid those slightly peculiar drying lines if we just leave it and move on. There we go. Wash the brush. Just gonna pick up that little bit of over spillage just there. So we will cover in the rest of the back, but what we're also going to do is we're going to do this over the top of the arms. So we've got all of the kind of scaly bits like that. And we've got the bicep as well. I'm going to wash the brush and then Again, we're just going to pick up the paint over the smoother areas. Like that. Do the same thing on the opposite side. And again, just going to wash the brush.
just like that. We actually want to add a little bit more just here. Like so. We will cover in the hands, but again, we don't need to do that just yet. And then what we've got to do is we've also got the face. So we're going to apply this over the top of the face. Like that sort of thing. And then we're going to wash the brush. Lift off most of the paint around the snout. And around the chin, like that. We just want to replicate this on both arms. Both legs and both hands. So with that Croxagore scales and contrast medium mix all applied all the way around, what we're going to do now is we're going to take a roughly one-to-one -one mix of contrast medium and pterodon turquoise. And we're going to still do a little bit of blending here and there, but really what we're going aiming to do is apply this over the top of all of our of heavy scales so really there's not tons of blend, blending and stuff to do it's only when you get close to sort of the musculature of the model so for example just here on the leg we can just come down like that over the top of the kind of hefty part of the leg and we can just kind of move on from there we can do the back we do still want to be a little bit careful. So for example, I've blobbed it there on the skeleton hoard where I don't want it. So I'm just gonna use a clean dry brush to just mop that up. It's gonna come all the way down the tail like this. We're going to do the whole of the back. Really just being on the watch out for any large dark pools here. And that one just there. Just gonna get in there, move it around. Like this, we'll bring it back over the top of the head as well. 
in here. I don't need to do the kind of furthest, well, closest to the kind of slightly brighter areas. Do need to do that row of scales. It gives it that kind of impression of smoothing out across the model. It goes from the bright to the mid to the darker. on turquoise just on that arm which we want to just catch like that speaking of the arms you want to do the whole of the hand you want to do all these large scales and this is where you kind of might have to do a bit of blending just in terms of that kind of soft inner forearm around the triceps and biceps. So with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Drakenhof Nightshade. I'm going to apply this over the top of all of our skin. So we're just going to start down here. I'm going to work our way up the model. I don't need loads on your brush at a time as you do this because it can get quite strong so just watch out So with that done, we've done a lot of darkening down. However, now it's time to do a bit of brightening up. Now this is not what we normally do around here. Normally we would get him all to a war hipster battle ready, and then we would take him to the next level. However, because a lot of this is dry brushing and a bit of kind of re-layering here and there, we're gonna get all of his kind of skin and scales up to that kind of next level, and then we'll go on to the rest of the details. So what we're gonna do now First is we're going to take some thinned down Zandri dust and we're going to use this on the flats of the muscles on the tummy and this is just on the tummy. What we want to do here is just not kind of a full relayer but more kind of just adding a little bit of brightness on the flats of these areas. We're using lots of little brush strokes. You don't wanna go right into where you've done all of that blending. But for example, just there on the armpit, we can do with smoothing things out just a little bit. Same for example down here. This will just help him look a little bit neater. idea. So 
So with that Zandri dust applied, what we're then gonna do is take some black Templar. I'm gonna use this to paint in all of the claws and all of the like kind of really detached spikes. And what I mean by that are the ones that look like they've grown. So like this one here on the knee. So that all done, it's time to add some dry brushes. And the first one we're gonna add is some Sotec Green. And this one isn't gonna appear like it's doing very much, but it's gonna give us a good foundation on the top of our scales and over the top of our black spiky bits. So with that Sotec Green dry brush applied, we're then gonna take some Cyberite Green and we're gonna be a lot more gentle here. And we're just gonna kind of stick towards the outer parts. With that Cyberite green dry brush applied, we then take Gorse Blaster Green. And what we want to do here is we want to be really, really gentle. It's a little bit too heavy. It's just a little too much on my brush. There we go. And we just want to catch the really large ones. And finally, we're gonna take some blue horror and we're gonna use this to dry brush around our kind of sharpest points. So we've got the front of the face, like that. We've got the top of his head. We've got this kind of area around the knee. A little bit around there. And we've got the central part of this kind of large arrangement on the back. Just like that. So with that done, it is now time to move on to different colors. And we're gonna go through these pretty quickly now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with some Flesh Terrors Red and we're gonna use this to paint in all of the ropes. And 
And with that flesh terror is red applied, we then take some Saigal Brown. And we're gonna apply this over top of the haft of each of the weapons. So with that now done, we're going to take two colours, Bad Moon Yellow and Striking Scorpion Green, and we're going to use these on the feathers. And But this is because I've done all of the feathers on the Seraphon so far in the same way, and I like it tying them all together. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the Bad Moon Yellow first, and we're going to apply this over the top of the entirety of the feather, like that. We're then going to wash the brush, grab a little bit of Striking Scorpion Green, a little bit more than that. And we're going to add this towards the tip of the flower. Flower? Feather. Just like that. If you've got like a harsh drying line, you can just add a little bit more bad moon yellow. Not very much to where the two colours meet. Just like that. So with that now done, we're then going to take Black Templar once again, and we're going to apply this over the top of this bauble, just here, and over the top of the other bits of stone. Like that. What we're also going to do is apply this over the gem, just in there. With that now done, we're going to take some Shaiish purple and we're going to apply this over the teeth, tongues and inside their mouths. With that Shaiish purple all applied, we're now going to take some Basilicanum Grey. I'm going to use this over the top of the stone of their weapons. So this is the kind of big clobbering bits. Now this one's going to be have a little bit different one to the rest of the unit. This is the special weapon. Can't remember what it's called. Something like a star soul mace or something like that. But fundamentally it's going to look the same. To begin with, and with that now done, we're now going to paint in the rest of the details using some thinned down Retributor armor. So with that Retributor armor all applied, it's now time to add a shade. And that shade is going to be some Gilliman flesh. So that done, our Croxagort is now what I would call a war hipster battle ready, and he's looking pretty fabulous. However, we're going to take him to the next level now. We're going to do this by adding some highlights and a couple of little extra bits and pieces. So the first colour we're going to use is some thinned down flash gets yellow. We're going to use this to pick out the eyes. With that flash gets yellow applied, we're then going to take a little bit of Screaming Skull. I'm going to use this to pick out the teeth. So with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take some thin down Dawnstone. I'm going to use this on the flat parts of the hammer 
Don't worry if you get this in some of the recesses, as we are going to make it glow. So with that all done, what we now do is we take some thin down administratum gray, and we're gonna use this to highlight our jewelry here on the front. Like that. And we're gonna use this to highlight our hammer. And with that done, we'll come back to the mace head in just a minute. But what we're gonna do is we're just gonna work on all the gold. And we're gonna once again, take some thinned down retributor armor. And we're gonna use this to basically relayer all of our large flat pieces. This is mostly just gonna be on the, on the weapon. And a lot of it's quite fiddly. We do have those large bands on their legs and arms. And so with that now done, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some thin down Liberator Gold and we're gonna use this to highlight all of the gold. So with that now done, to finish them all off, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some Baharoth Blue. We're gonna thin it down with five or six plants of water. And we're gonna run this into the recesses on the mace. And so here we have it, our finished Croxigore. Look at them. They're so sexy. <laughs> I think we all agree on that. I think they're absolutely fantastic. A plastic kit of them has been much needed for a very, very long time. And they look absolutely phenomenal. It's like Total War come to life, but in the realms of the Age of Sigma and the Mortal Realms. Oh man, they're so cool. I want like 19 of them. Maybe I will. Maybe I will. If you enjoyed this video, you love the channel, and you'd like to support me further, you absolutely can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster, just like these bosses have done scrolling up on the screen before you, whose continued support helps me continue to make all the wonderful content that you enjoy. Alternatively, you could become a YouTube channel member by clicking on the join button on the channel page or just below this video like these wonderful, amazing people have done. And if you really like this video and you just want to shoot me a little thanks, you can click on the thanks button just below this video. Don't forget to share it, like it, comment on it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And to make sure you stay up to date, don't forget to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Happy Wargaming.